just tuning us in one more time. Mike Babcock, about 30 minutes ago, was relieved of his duties as head coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'm Sid Sixero. He's Tim McAuliffe. That should be the theme for today's show, Timmy. Here's a statement the Toronto Maple Leafs made via, it's amazing, in this day and age, this came out via a letterhead from the Toronto Maple Leafs and was not leaked in any way, shape, or form. All it said, Maple Leafs make coaching change. Sheldon Keefe. Named 31, 31st head coach in franchise history. There are some quotes in here. Would you like to hear the quotes from Brendan Shanahan? I would like them, and I think people watching and listening would like to hear them. Uh, Today we made the decision to relieve Mike Babcock of his coaching duties and name Sheldon Keefe our new head coach. Let it be known that that's not interim, just our new head coach. Shanahan goes on to say over parts of the last five seasons, Mike has played an integral role in changing the direction of our franchise. He goes on to say, at this time, we collectively felt like it was best to make a change to Sheldon Keefe. Sheldon's record with the Marlies in terms of development and on ice success during his time in our organization has compelled us all to feel that he is the right person to take us to the next stage in our evolution. Shanahan did uh, mention Mike Babcock's commitment and his tireless work ethic within the organization. The Toronto Maple Leafs, as we speak, are in Scottsdale preparing for a game tomorrow night against the Coyotes. Mike Shanahan, excuse me, Brennan Shanahan, no, actually, Brennan Shanahan will speak live coming up at 6 p.m. Eastern. We will go live to that media availability right here on Sportsnet and Sportsnet 590 The Fan. You don't have to go anywhere. Again, Brennan Shanahan, president of the Toronto Maple Leafs, will be speaking to the media, talking about the decision to fire Mike Babcock as head coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs. If you are a hockey fan, and quite frankly, if you are not, you know the storyline with this hockey team over the past several weeks and really the past several years, especially come April. A lot of talent, a lot of points, a lot of skill, defensive deficiencies, a lot of reliance on Freddie Anderson. This is not a perfect hockey team, never has been under Mike Babcock, although they're paying him $50 million over the seven years. So you expect certain things behind the bench. We'll get to that a little later on. In the more recent times, Timmy, as you know, only two regulation wins for the Leafs in their last 16 games. I repeat, two regulation wins in their last 16 games, the latest of which happening last night in Vegas where Babcock – who earlier in the week said he always bets on Babcock, came up snake eyes, losing 4-2 to the Vegas Golden Knights. It was a better effort. I think most people left that game last night, Tim, with a a better feeling kind of about Toronto and days of discussion. I know you're giving me the grin, but the, the, the talk was strong. They had a players only meeting. They wanted to get things tightened up. They wanted to play a different style. In less than 24 hours after that result last night, Tim, Babcock is gone. Your initial reaction to this was what? I don't think that this is the last night reaction game. Okay. I think they played a little bit better last night. I think they wanted a result. And I think that when Mike Babcock came out to speak to the media after the game, he thought he got a little more out of the franchise. And the part that stuck out to me the most when he was speaking was who he praised at the end of the game. Guys, if we have the clip from yesterday, this doesn't sound like a guy that thinks that he's going to get fired. And I am the guy that came out here after the weekend that was and said, that's the kind of weekend that can get your head coach fired. This was Babcock after last night's game. And make note of who he is praising for showing the kind of work ethic that both he and Morgan Riley had said that they needed against the Vegas Golden Knights. Bottom line is we've got to stick with it and just keep grinding. And, you know, we had a chance on the power play there at the end, and and we didn't execute on that. And so, uh, you know, it's it's disappointing, but I'm always about the process and how hard guys play. And we played way harder. So I thought that was good. I thought Hyman was back. I thought McKayef really had a good step. So that was positive for us. Hyman and Mikheyev. I see nothing wrong with the comments. Is who the head coach <laughs> praises. There's nothing wrong with the comments. After what was their sixth straight loss. And as you mentioned, uh, their <laughs> um, 
just two wins in 16 games in regulation. In regulation? In regulation. That's disgusting. Another loss and allowing the opening goal for the eighth straight game and the 18th time in 23 games. Like, there was a lot of things wrong with this franchise, but it seemed to me when you point out Mikheyev, who they picked up out of the KHL, and Zach Hyman as the two guys you want to point to at a time when your team needs everybody to pull up their big boy pants, to leave out all, and some of them are hurt, but to leave out all the guys who make the collective $40 million up front is shocking to me. But it isn't that shocking to me. Austin Matthews and Mike Babcock were never on the same page. No, and I think you could, arg- I think you could argue that the general manager and the head coach Definitely. may never have been on the same page. And I think you could probably go back to Lou Lamarillo leaving the franchise as a part of that never been on the same page. And Lou Lamarillo is doing okay right now. Uh, the Islanders have a point in 15 straight games right now after that uh, effort last night. FYI, Lou Lamarillo winning games. Leo Komarov winning games. So you knew when the players-only meeting happened and you knew that there wasn't the response that they wanted that something could have happened or was going to happen. Now, a lot of people in and around this area and a lot of people doing national media thought, well, the shakeup could be a trade. The shakeup could be an assistant coach. By the way, the assistant coaches remain, and Sheldon Keefe just walks in there. Are you okay with the timing? Uh, I understand the timing. Look, I never understood the logic, and we talked to people we respect on this show. I never understood the logic of, well, they'll still give it some time. They'll wait to the end of the road trip. Tim, the math on this is pretty obvious to me. They're two points out of a wild card. Do you know who's played more games in the Leafs in the Eastern Conference? Nobody. Nobody. Not a single team has played more games than the Toronto Maple Leafs in the Eastern Conference. They're already two points. Out. Tampa Bay have five games less in the standings, and they're two points behind them. And I- now I know Kucherov got hurt last night. But don't tell me Tampa's going to reel their ass in eventually. I like the the you-know-who game. Do you know who has the same amount of wins as the Toronto Maple Leafs and has played two less games than the Toronto Maple Leafs? Hit them with it. Hit them with it. The Ottawa Senators have nine wins on the season. The Toronto Maple Leafs fired their head coach, Mike Babcock, at nine wins, ten losses, and four overtime, whatever the hell you want to call them. I didn't think DJ Smith would be in a better coaching situation right now than Mike Babcock before the season. That's not something I thought of as a thing that could happen in hockey. But we're here now. Now, but And the timing, to to answer your initial question again, Tim, the timing was right on this this season. The logic of letting this play out when clearly the, the defensive philosophy of this team didn't line up, when certain superstars, like okay, when, well, when, when Babcock's going to Arizona and Phoenix and talking to Matthews on a play, like it's not good. Is that healthy? Is that normal in a regular, consistently winning relationship where a coach does that with a star player in the offseason? Not really. So we've known for a long time there was friction in that room. We've known for a long Morgan Riley was a Babcock guy forever. Tavares, the second he walked in the room, Babcock guy. Mm -hmm. And we knew who weren't the Babcock guys. It was obvious who the Babcock guys weren't. So the the fact that he's still singling out dudes as recently as last night, I am not the least bit surprised that narrative continued. And it's not the dudes that the GM paid $40 million to. That's why I was shocked. Not because they played wonderfully and he needed to laud those players for what they did to the general public so they could say what wonderful players. Because the guy who's paying these players who put up all the money isn't getting his money's worth. So you either blame the players, which we know doesn't happen in professional sports, or you blame the head coach. And the head coach wasn't circling back to try and glad hand any of these players after last night's game. It was Hyman and Mikheyev. And we've heard that song before. And Hyman's been back a hot minute. From the head coach. Yeah. And he played okay last night. He did play. I'm not not, not mad at Hyman. Not mad at Hyman. But Matthews was, you know, minus one, two shots. He was a ghost. Matthews was a ghost last night. 
I'm not saying he was worth praising. No, he wasn't great. He wasn't great. No. Nope. But that's not your point. Your point is in this moment of galvanizing, you need a leader. And the cheapest I'm learning rhetoric on earth is leader. That's very difficult to find. Right. That is very rare to find in a human being. You can say you're a leader. You can have, a, you can, you can have all the titles you want. It's very difficult to lead people properly. And Babcock had his favorites, and he had guys he wasn't that hot on because they didn't, he didn't think they worked hard enough. And sometimes he was right, and it was never working out. It was never working out. And, Tim, I'm, where, where I'm upset is I, I didn't think you should have brought him back to begin with. 